Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to talk about nozzles, and yes, size does matter no matter what anybody says. So, let's jump into this. So, one of the things I've been getting a lot of questions lately about nozzle size. So, I know like CNC Kitchen, uh, Tom, that German guy that does a lot of technical stuff uh, has covered some stuff on this. And whenever these guys cover out stuff, I seem to get a lot of questions uh, about things. And I'm sure it's probably because they got a lot of viewers and it's very hard to get questions answered. So I want to do this video to answer a number of the questions I've been getting on this topic. Because it's been a common theme, especially around the CR10. So, you know, again, a lot of folks are going big. It, it's a big printer. Um, so you want to go with a big nozzle, print quickly, uh, you know, especially, you know, kind of cut down some of these 40-hour prints. And how do you do that? You go with a bigger nozzle. So typically it comes with about a 0.4 nozzle. And a lot of folks are going up to, you know, 0.6 or 0.8. And there's a lot of questions because, uh, like over on the CNC Kitchen, he went with the Volcano nozzle. Why do you have to do that? Can't you just put a, no a new nozzle on, you know, the hot end and go for it? Well, well, yes, sort of you can, but let's talk about it and what you might run into by doing that. So what I've done here, and I'll do some overlay so you can see this a little bit better, is I've done some comparison between a 0.4, a 0.6, and a 0.8 because for myself, I have a 0.6 on my CR10, and I, I find that size works relatively well for that size of printer. And I haven't gone up to the point eight. I'm going to talk about why. So let's back up a little bit because there's a couple dynamics here that I want to share with you guys. One of the things is how a circle works. Yes, a circle. These are nozzles. They have a circular opening. And we're talking about a point four, which is over here. So if we look at the point four and we compare this to a point six, right on the surface you might say, okay, Joe, you know, point six is 50% bigger, you know, because point four and point six, well, no not quite. If you do pi r square, what you find out is a 0.6 nozzle is actually 2.25 times larger than the 0.4. And if you go to a 0.8, it's actually four times larger. There's a geometric progression because these um, circles that are down here on the paper, and I have probably have done an overlay, are actually in proportion. So this is in proportion to a 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and a 0.8. So to kind of give you an idea. So it gets big quick. What does this mean? The more plastic you push through, the more plastic you got to melt, the more energy it's going to take. This is one of the reasons that, um, you know, the volcano hot end exists because it has a bigger heating element because we have the ceramic heating element here which heats up the hot end melts the plastic plastic gets deposited if you're pushing a bunch of plastic you need to heat the plastic even more put more energy in to melt the plastic makes sense so yes you can um, as I've done here just put in a 0.6 and go for it. Now there's some other dynamics that we have to take into account with this also. One is called PID, the proportional in, uh, integral derivative. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Now if you go back on the Watt How playlist, I've, I've done a lot of stuff on PID, on PID settings before. What PID does is actually controls how much how much and how fast the hot end or the ceramic element should heat up to make a temperature or to help maintain a temperature. If it doesn't, it undershoots or overshoots. And that's what this little waveform I have um, here is an example of, because I've also done this in comparison too. So here you have the typical waveform that you might see oscillation between, you know, cooling off, heating up, cooling off, heating up, etc. This frequency is going to increase with each one of these sizes because, again, it's going to take more heat. So as the plastic moves through the hot end, it's going to take heat away from the hot end, meaning the uh, ceramic uh, heater is going to have to heat up again. And then, again, you're going to create this whole loop. Now, one of the things, the pit setting is really set mostly for the 0.4 because this is what the machine came configured for. So one of the things that you will want to do 
is uh, measure the PID and probably reset your PID settings inside your firmware. What happens if you don't? Well, you're going to have a lot of undershooting and overshooting. And what this can do is lead to poor layer adhesion and, and poor adhesion in general inside your models. Are you going to have a big problem? Maybe not. If you're just printing a low poly Pikachus or Koozies or something like that, you probably won't have a problem. But if you're going to be printing some serious parts, I highly recommend changing the PID or measuring the PID, uh, calculating a new PID, and entering that for your machine. Uh, I, I do recommend you can go up to I haven't I haven't tried it myself because I think again going up to the 0.8 uh, with the standard hot end is probably again doable it threads in and plastic will come out uh, but again I think you you might run into layer adhesion issues with the 0.8. I'd be interested to hear from you guys down below. I know with the, going to the point six, what I've done is I've retuned my PIDs a little bit, and I also run a little bit more heat on the hot end than I do typically for the filament. So if I run maybe say 205 on the PLA, uh, I'll probably run 208 to 10 uh, to kind of give myself a little bit more leeway and kind of cheat a little bit, and I find that works well. Uh, so something to kind of keep in mind if you're doing that. The other thing I want to talk about is pushing plastic through here. Now, I, I'm in this episode, I'm talking about starting at 0.4 and going up since this is where most of the questions have been. And again, predominantly because a lot of people are putting bigger nozzles in their CR10s. And the other thing to keep in mind is the force to push the plastic out. Because with this at uh, re at uh, 0.4 you have a reduction ratio in other words from from you know the existing filament size of you know what a point oh, you know 1.75 millimeters etc down to 0.4 is a 77 uh, to 1 reduction when we start talking a 0.6 we're talking 34 to 1 reduction and we're talking about 19 to 1 reduction if i got all the numbers right on 0.8 what i'm trying to share here is is it takes less force from the extruder to push the plastic the bigger the nozzle gets. Makes sense, right? Now, what this also means is you can push things a little faster, too. So, but when you start pushing things faster, even if you're, say, using 50 millimeters a second for the 0.4 and you stay at 50 millimeters a second for the 0.6, you know, you're you're already pushing 2.5 times the plastic. Now, if you increase the speed, you're pushing even more plastic, so you're going to need to put in even more heat into the equation. And again, this is why something like the Volcano, um, the, you know, hot end comes into play, is it allows you to pump more heat, because at a certain point in time, you're going to, you know, efficiency is going to run out. And again, you know, you can melt the plastic, but are you going to get a good quality part? Probably not. So if you want to run fast, you want to run a big nozzle, that's where you really want to um, go to a, a larger hot end. Now, the thing is, I'm not going to get into it in much detail, but now you can kind of see this ratio. What if you get something like a 0.1? The, the um, ratio is going to be astronomical. Uh, so your extruder is going to have to put a lot of pressure to get that plastic through a 0.1. And when you start getting below really you know, 0.4, you really start, you, you know, you're going to really need to start looking at like a geared extruder to put that pressure on there to kind of push that plastic through that orifice because it is so small. The other thing keep in mind too, the, the larger you go in nozzle size, the less detail you will be able to resolve and you will be able to resolve that less detail proportional to the size. So again, if you're used to a 0.4, you're going to lose approximately four times the resolution because on an 8 because it's that much bigger. The same thing with a 0.6, you're going to lose about half your resolution. So keep that in mind depending upon what you're going to print. It's not a perfect Nirvana by going up in, in size. Now with my CR10, I usually print a lot of larger objects, a lot of bigger surface area things, and so it's not a big deal. I usually print um, more detailed stuff on my smaller printers because it tends they tend to be smaller objects in general. So this again is where 
kind of understanding what you're going to print and tuning your printer to those types of prints. Now this is again why I have multiple printers because I've got the uh, the CR10, the Tron XC, uh, X5S, and the JG Aurora, which are all big deck printers. And I keep different size nozzles in each one of them to do different things. And then I also have several small printers around the Model Price Mini line. And then I have a number of 200 millimeter printers. And again, what I do is I structure these four different tasks so I can tune each printer to that task. So now again, if you're just as you know, hobbyist printing out odd lot stuff, you know, having one or two printers probably suffices in, in tuning it to the optimal configuration probably is not that big of a thing and I would really suggest if this is the case just stick with the 0.4 you know but if you're really getting into it and you're going up to the 0.6 to 0.8 then I would definitely suggest changing the hot end especially if you want to go to the 0.8 I would suggest a more robust hot end to push that plastic because then you'll be able to push it at higher speeds you'll be able to push more plastic and you'll keep your layer adhesion properties as they should be so anyways hopefully this video helped explain some of it of what going big really means in the 3d printing world and hopefully i've kept it kind of straightforward i didn't want to get into all the math of you know how much you know heat's going to be absorbed how many kilojoules will be needed per millimeter of plastic you know all that kind of stuff you can go out on the internet and there's tons of stuff out there on this kind of thing but i wanted to kind of make this simple just to kind of put it in perspective for everybody that's been asking about it so here it is folks if you have questions hit me up down below if you are running a 0.8 let me know what you think uh, of running that 0.8 maybe on a stock machine what have you done did i miss anything i've talked about pids i've talked about the size of the plastic i've talked about you know uh, reduction and pressure from the extruder so again i think i hit most things out here but if i didn't hit me up in the comments don't forget to swag shop up there and we'll see you guys all in the next video cheers please click like below and subscribe to the channel